Mr. President, before I turn to uh, speaking to the subject of student loans, let me associate myself with the remarks of my colleague, our colleague from the state of Washington, uh, Senator Cantwell. I heard the Republican leader talk about uh, a pro-growth agenda. Well, there's nothing more pro-growth than exporting American goods and services uh, overseas to the growing markets all over the world. And the XM Bank uh, has a long record of providing the foundation on which our, our businesses, small, medium, and large, can do just that. So uh, let's bring up uh, what the House has passed and move it through this chamber as fast as possible. Uh, Mr. President, I mentioned I wanted to uh, stand up this morning and speak in, on behalf of students all across America. Uh, in my home state of Colorado, uh, students and recent college graduates are literally struggling with a mountain uh, of loan debt. Uh, now, as a mountain climber myself, uh, I understand that mountains can be overcome, but in an economy like this one where recent college graduates are struggling to find work, we need to do more. We need to do everything we possibly can to make college more affordable. And that's where we, the Congress, comes in. The interest rate, as we all know, on the federally subsidized Stafford loans are set to double on July 1st, barring congressional action. So we, have, we, we just don't have much time to play political games here before the mountain of debt facing our students begins to grow even higher. Student loans play a crucial role in making higher education possible for millions of Americans. And for many Americans, higher education is the gateway to their future careers and to better paying jobs. So that's a good thing for our families, and it's a good thing for our economy. Again, referencing the Republican leaders' concerns about a pro-growth agenda. Uh, more specifically, let me talk about what the federally subsidized Stafford loans uh, do. They're designed for American students from low to middle income families so that they too can afford to go to college. And at a time when students are facing escalating tuition costs and an uncertain job market after graduation, it would truly be irresponsible for us not to act as soon as possible. But I have to report to you uh, and uh, uh, our colleagues that we're being blocked from doing just that. Uh, there's a common sense proposal before us that would prevent these student loan interest rates from doubling, but it's being filibustered. Uh, all these students want, all our the young people that we all know, uh, want is an opportunity to better themselves and contribute to our nation's economic growth. And we have a chance to offer them that opportunity, but we've got to end the political games here and get to work. We can't let partisanship stand in the way of a college education for young Americans. It, it just doesn't make sense, certainly out in my state of Colorado. Uh, Coloradans understand this, and they're telling me, as I think they are in the presiding officer's state and states all across the country, just, just get it done. Uh, there's there's uh, no time left to just get it done. Uh, I asked Colorado students um, through my Facebook page to contact me with their concerns so that I could share them here on the Senate floor. And I wanted to bring their voices directly to the Congress so we would all understand better what's at stake in, Co in Colorado and all over our country so that uh, it might give us some additional motivation. So I I'd like to share a couple of stories uh, here on the floor of the Senate. Uh, Justine Espinall is from Aurora. She's a single mother of two children. She's currently enrolled in nursing school after being displaced from her job in the mortgage industry. She enrolled in nursing school so that she could provide for her family and contribute to the workforce. She said, quote, I am just barely making ends meet and need the help of student loans. Please don't double my interest rate. Then there's Nicholas Collins. He's a senior communications major at the University of Colorado. And he's in the middle of preparing for final exams this week. But he took time to write to me. And he wrote, Senator Udall, I will be graduating two weeks from today. I could not imagine a future where students would be forced to pay up to $1,000 more per year to pay off their loans. I would not be in the position I am today if it wasn't for federal aid. The concerns that are expressed by Justin and Nicholas are just a couple of vivid examples of the concerns facing millions of American students. Mr. President, as you know, we all know there's a broad consensus that we have to prevent these Stafford loans from doubling on July 1st. However, many of our friends on the other side 
want to raid the Prevention and Public Health Fund to offset the costs of these student loans. Now, this fund is aimed at preventing chronic disease, and it was implemented as a part of the Affordable Care Act. The Prevention and Public Health Fund helps to reduce chronic diseases, including diabetes and heart disease, while also providing much-needed dollars towards immunizations for children. And I understand that the health bill uh, was controversial, but to continue attacking it, especially when uh, students' futures are on the line, is uh, puzzling, uh, to say the least. While we could be closing unfair tax loopholes, as the underlying bill proposes, the Republicans here in the Senate are telling us that we have to choose between a bright future for our students or preventing chronic disease for millions of Americans. That just doesn't make sense. This is about providing opportunity to say that we can no longer care for the sick or help prevent chronic disease if we want to help students is a false and, I might say, political choice. There are plenty of tax loopholes big oil subsidies and other savings that don't leave students, the sick, or hardworking Americans out in the cold. Mr. President, uh, we owe it to people like Justin and Nicholas to come together to find a way to ensure that American students continue to have access to affordable loans. I look forward to working with you and our colleagues here in the Senate to make sure that we do right by our nation's students on this. And I'd urge all of us to end this impasse and instead work together. Let's roll up our sleeves literally and figuratively and find the right solution. Let's prove to Coloradans, to the students in Colorado and to all the students across our country that the Senate can accomplish something important